First, to the EPA and a letter that went last week from EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson to Senators unveiling her plan on how greenhouse gas regulations would proceed if Congress can't agree to climate legislation limiting carbon emissions. Clean Skies' Dan Goldstein looks at how the EPA plans to use the Clean Air Act to control carbon emissions and what may lie ahead. While a Senate bill on carbon may be on the way... Better to legislate than regulate. It may not be soon enough. And we're on a, a short track here in terms of piecing together legislation that we intend to roll out. I'm not going to give you days. I'm not going to give you a date because I always know what happens when you do that. That's because the EPA may not wait. Last week, the agency gave its clearest signal yet as to what it plans to do if Congress doesn't act. In a letter to eight coal state Democrats, EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson detailed her approach to limiting carbon emissions. As I've said from the beginning, EPA can use the Clean Air Act to make smart, sensible regulation that's entirely consistent with the idea of long-term legislation. Jackson's plan would require no action on greenhouse gas emissions in 2010 to give states and industries time to prepare. The biggest emitters, like power plants already regulated under the Clean Air Act, would have to address those emissions in EPA permit applications starting in 2011. Next up would be medium-sized emitters, like small factories, beginning in the second half of 2011 through 2012. The smallest emitters, like mom and pop stores, wouldn't see regulations before 2016, if at all. The key to making sure that we don't have any bad impacts on our economy is predictability and time. And the EPA has tried to minimize the impact on small businesses saying facilities that emit under 25,000 tons of carbon a year could be exempted. And Jackson in her letter said that limits could go even higher. But already more than a dozen farm and industry groups have filed suit against the EPA, saying the agency hadn't proved its case when it comes to global warming and the danger of those emissions. And the EPA could find itself in trouble on another front too, namely its attempt to exempt some of the smaller emitters. This is just an exercise of enforcement discretion by saying bigger sources are most important, medium sources less so, and then smaller sources are relatively unimportant so that we won't get to them to 2015 or 2016. However, there is still great legal peril associated with setting up that three-part typology when there's no reference to it within the Clean Air Act. So they've got a legal issue that's pending there that they're, gonna, they're going to have to resolve and I, I predict will be challenged. And even defenders of the EPA are concerned that the agency could be carving out too big of an exemption in an effort to head off Congress. We will look at the final number and ask the question, are the big sources covered and are the things that are excluded the small things that have never been covered by permitting before. If she gets the number right, then we'll support it. Still, Congress is likely to have the final say on the EPA's plans. Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski has gotten nearly 40 votes for a resolution that would bar the EPA from regulating greenhouse gas emissions. Farm state Democrats like Colin Peterson in the House have offered similar measures. That could force the White House to spend political capital on heading off a climate defeat rather than passing a bill. Dan Goldstein, Clean Skies News.